Hello. Welcome to today's show, which is a comparison between the new iPad and the Samsung Galaxy 10.1. Uh, definitely one of the lightest, uh, thinnest ones on each side of the iOS, uh, iOS spectrum and the Android spectrum. So let's see which one uh, reigns supreme. Uh, we'll start off on uh, screen since obviously that's the biggest thing right now. So first we'll just see the regular app icon clarity. Let's zoom in. And I'm just going to leave it at this because your eyes can't actually zoom in closer than this unless you're right up on the screen. And if you are, then you probably shouldn't own a tablet if you hold it that close to your eyes. Just saying. Just saying. Alright, so that's the clarity. Um, definitely, obviously, the retina display, you can see uh, the clarity of the text. Uh, but... Definitely the uh, text itself, uh, definitely have to hand it to the Galaxy Tab for just having a really crisp text. Uh, Android's newest text is called Roboto. So it's definitely won rewards for the sharpest text and it just makes it more on the comparable side instead of a clean cut win. So now let's go to other things you use text for like books. So we'll test out two books. And we'll just zoom in. Obviously, different kind of layouts um, on the iPad. It's generally portrait, whereas the Android, you have a nice two-page layout. But, again, text is very sharp on both. Uh, because of the different aspect ratio, it kind of makes it a little bit um, closer together. But, again, the written display will just be slightly ahead in that aspect. All right. Now we're going to zoom out. And we're going to go to pictures. Now let's see how they stack up. This should be kind of interesting because Samsung makes both screens. So let's see which one kind of stands out when it comes to pictures. Right here. Photos there. And so now to see the pictures, uh, definitely the colors are a bit more saturated on here. Although the the new iPad is 30% more saturated because of the Samsung screen than the iPad 2. Colors just tend to stand out a bit more in comparison. On the details, uh, both fairly sharp. You can see the poles. The fine text right there, and definitely see the cars and the vans, as well as the lights, even the arrow on the street. So, pretty comparable in terms of it. Again, the Samsung's uh, colors are going to be a bit stronger, whereas the iPad doesn't really stand out too much in clarity on the pictures. Now, these are both HD pictures, just to remind you. Um, so, definitely just even when we zoom in, um, definitely the winner on pictures I would have to give it to Samsung just because the colors all look a lot richer and you can definitely notice it on pictures like this where your colors definitely stand out more whereas the iPad they're a little bit more dull uh, still saturated but just kind of don't stand out as much alright and now let's move on to websites so I'm just going to pull up website here, pull up website here. And on websites, it's a little bit differentiation just because the Galaxy is definitely more zoomed in on here than um, the iPad just because this is a 16 by 9 ratio. Typically just the way our websites are meant to be viewed uh, is the 16 by 9 ratio because that's how they're made for laptops and computers. So while this is a little bit, I would say, finer because of the retina display, this one you just, it definitely is bigger just because of the actual ratio being the correct proportion as opposed to this being a little bit squished in. So uh, that's on websites and now let's go to movies. I'm going to play the same trailer. 
and play in both. Just turn these down a little bit. So definitely in this comparison. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy tablet is uh, definitely the brighter tablet, so it, uh, it gives it a little bit of an advantage just by brightness itself in terms of watching videos. Of course, Android itself is going to be better for watching videos just simply because of the fact that it is a 16 by 9 ratio as opposed to a 4 by 3, so you get this really it's kind of squished up looking... Uh, black line kind of visual. Uh, Apple has never been the best for watching movies on an iPad, uh, but definitely something that uh, it's always lacked in um, in comparison to an Android tablet just because of their aspect ratio. Um, so definitely when watching the two, I mean the Samsung just gives the better color, uh, obviously the better sound just because of the stereo speakers instead of the little mono one on the iPad. Um, so definitely when it comes to videos, uh, it's definitely going to be the Samsung Galaxy tablet, even with the clarity of the iPad, the video quality doesn't show really much different in the two's comparison. But you definitely get better colors, better brightness, better sound, and the proper ratio, so you get a bigger overall and better experience. Okay. Now, speed. So, uh, for Android you have uh, two views, um, and Apple you have the regular stock view. On uh, Android you have the simple view, which is uh, more like iOS, which is just your app drawer. So, in comparison, they're both pretty fast. You can't really notice too much of a difference. Now, on Android's custom view, when you bring it up. Uh, on this way, I would definitely give the edge to iOS slightly. It won't be too much of a difference when you're actually in use. Or actually, not much of a difference at all. Um, but it's slightly, I would say, faster. But And definitely, the simplistic layout, when you just go to your app drawer, Android is just going to be faster. Especially on the Samsung Galaxy tab, because unlike the iOS button, which which just showed the dots on the bottom, uh, on the Android app drawer, you can actually go to the, you can use the dots to go to that page. So even on the home screen, you can go to the first one, you can go to the last one, all with just a quick touch, which does uh, make going from page to page a lot quicker than just moving stock. Now, in terms of multitasking, uh, for both apps have their own way of multitasking. For iOS, it's just a double tap, and you get all of your stuff right here. And in terms of Android, you have all of your recent apps right here. So you can just jump between each one. Let's just jump between a few right now. So, in terms of jumping between apps, well, as I was going to give it to iOS, uh, Android just kind of went a little quicker there. So, it seems like it depends on the app that we jump to, if it's going to be quicker. Oh. So, a uh, slight edge goes to the iOS device, the new iPad, on jumping from app to app. Now, the only thing that you could give the Galaxy an advantage for is that unlike iOS, where you do have to jump from app to app, with Android uh, on the Galaxy tab, you can use mini apps. So, if you're doing something normal, you can actually use this on top of the app and uh, anything from a little note-taking app to 
using your calendar, seeing your appointments and your dates you have to do on that day, as well as even a task manager. So unlike you have to go to here and then hold it down and everything like that to do it, with this one you can actually just do it on top of everything else. Just a more simple, easy way of actually doing multitasking, true multitasking, instead of just jumping from thing to thing, you can actually do it simultaneous, um, simultaneously. Now, uh, getting things done. Well, in terms of getting things done, uh, definitely the advantage has to go to an Android tablet simply because of the fact that you have widgets. So right here I can view my emails as well as uh, view my calendar right from there. I don't have to go to anywhere. It's just right there on the home screen. Um, also, uh, things like a snapshot instead of pushing two buttons, just one button to do a snapshot. So you really have a lot of things, including even uh, being able to end and close and certain settings. You don't have to jump to the settings and then go to it. You can actually just have it right here. You can turn off your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, brightness, you know, things like that, right from here or even from the short screen. So you don't have to change everything. You don't have to go out of your way to change things. You get things done faster on an Android tablet. In terms of battery life, uh, both tablets exhibit about a 10 hour battery life on average. Um, and both tablets really stand out against other tablets in terms of standby time. Uh, they definitely won't die on you if you're not, if you're not using them. They won't, like the battery life won't suddenly jump down from, either if you had it at 50% and jump down to 20% the next time you turn it on. No, it'll basically be very, very slow um, in terms of draining battery life. So definitely both exhibit about a 10 hour battery life. Uh, definitely you can have a single day use on either one, if not uh, more so if you use it lightly. Now in terms of weight and feel, well, this one's an arguable one. Uh, the new iPad is definitely a heavier feel. Now a lot of people do love this aluminum brush, uh, but just definitely not as pleasant if you hold it for a long duration of time. I'll definitely, it feels a premium feel to it, but the main downside to it is that if you hold it for a long time, it just, it feels kind of, it kind of more metally, so it's like rusty feeling. Whereas a Samsung Galaxy tablet, it is plastic, so it doesn't immediately feel as nice, but however, after holding it for a long time, the curve is definitely better uh, than the new iPad is, so you can definitely hold this for a longer period of time without feeling the need to put it down or just kind of your hands feel weird or anything like that. Um, as well as the plastic uh, makes it so that you don't have fingerprints on it and you can't even tell uh, when dust is on it. And like with the iPad, it definitely attracts uh, it. Now, in terms of price, well, in terms of price, uh, that has uh, been a big change that just recently happened which is the new iPad um, is coming in at the main flagship price of $4.99 for 16 gig, while the Samsung Galaxy Tablet 10.1 is coming in at a respectable $3.99 for a 16 gig. So in terms of pricing, you definitely get a tablet for $100 less, um, which still exhibits really quick response definitely better for video watching and uh, definitely comparable in a lot of aspects. Now, in conclusion, uh, well, it's ultimately gonna go to um, what ecosystem you're already a part of. If you have iOS devices, then obviously this would be a great add-on to your current uh, portion. If you have Android devices or Windows devices, Android definitely syncs up better with your entire ecosystem for that purpose because with iOS, it just works, and with Android, it just works with everything. Um, in terms of apps, both have over 450,000 apps, so you won't run out anytime soon. The only problem with the new iPad is it now only has uh, 42 apps that are actually made for um, the new iPad, and you can find that out by uh, great apps for a new iPad, and there's only 42 of them, so that's definitely not many made for this tablet yet. You do still have, you know, the original 200,000 apps, but they just definitely don't look as sharp as uh, they used to. Um, I actually prefer them on the iPad 2 in comparing to the new iPad. Whereas in Android, you do have a lot of uh, tablet apps, uh, definitely over 100,000 tablet apps. But the main thing is, is that when it comes to free apps, there's a huge difference. 
Although both tablets have over 400,000 apps, Android actually has 100,000 more free apps. Uh, just definitely uh, comparable apps, even like to games like Infinity Blade, which is the new iPad's flagship game. You can get things like Blood and Glory, which is basically the same kind of principle, but it's free. So uh, definitely apps that stand out. Um, it's kind of which one you uh, prefer in terms of ecosystem. Either would be a great buy. It just really depends on you and what ecosystem you want to belong to. All right. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And thanks for watching. This is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Hey guys, have an Android question? Feel free to click the I have a question button, you know, if you have a question. Or you can just leave us a question in the comment section down below. I'll respond ASAP. Or if your question's really good, I'll dedicate a whole video towards it. This is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Oh yeah, and of course, subscribe to us, because in the Android we trust.